Welcome to our series of tutorials about Adobe Audition, which is Adobe's program for audio editing. So far in this course we've focused on visuals in both Photoshop and Illustrator, and now we're going to be switching gears and focusing specifically on audio. Um, audio is in some ways simpler than those other programs. There are fewer tools and we're not going to be using as many effects. However, it can be challenging because it means you need to have good raw material and think through your story um, so that you know that that's going to be effective. You don't really get to rely on a lot of tricks within the software. It's all about having good material to begin with. For this tutorial, we're going to start with some really basic content. We're going to record ourselves counting out of order and then put it back in order with some music playing underneath. So here I am in Audition, and we're going to go ahead and start a new file by going File, New, Multitrack Session. Go ahead and give this a name. I'm going to call it Tutorial 1, and I'm going to make sure I save this into my Tutorials folder that I've created. And we want to make sure that the sample rate, it may be set to 48. We want to have it set to 44.1 for the hertz. Make sure it's set to 16 bits and is set to stereo. The options here are stereo versus mono. When you listen to music in headphones, you can hear it in both ears because it's in stereo mode. And that's what we're going to use for most of our projects. These other settings are what is sufficient for the web. We don't need a higher quality than that. Once you have those settings in place, you can go ahead and hit OK. Now we have the multi-track editor um, interface. You can see this in Audition. Over here on the left is where we can add additional content from to our project from other places on our computer. In the middle we have our editing window, and um, around the edges we have some additional sort of uh, editing tools and, um, and effects. And up here in the top we have our tools bar that we have, and you'll notice that there are far fewer tools than we have um, for other programs um, because there just aren't as many things we need to do. So we can go ahead and get started. In this case, um, you will have hopefully already recorded yourself counting from 1 to 10 out of order. Um, if you haven't done that already, you can certainly do that now. I already did this using a smartphone. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and add that file to my project. You can either drag it into this file pane, or I'm just going to navigate to it in my um, tutorials folder this way. So this is a folder or a file from my smartphone. I can go ahead and play it right here in the waveform view. I'm using the spacebar to navigate, and I'm going to click back over here in my panel to my uh, tutorial session that I set up with the multi-track uh, setup, and I'm going to drag my file into the first track. I don't need all this extra content that or extra space in this file. I only need the part of myself counting, so I'm going to go ahead and delete parts of that. Um, you can use the select tool to select parts of your file and delete them. You can also just, if you're trimming from the edges, use the Move tool and hover over the edge till you get that red bar and you can pull in to trim a file as well. I don't need any of that beginning part, that was just me clearing my throat, and we don't need the stuff at the end either. That sounds about right. One thing to be careful about if you use the um, time display tool is that uh, it will actually keep that selection and it can affect your exports, so go ahead and clear it when you're done. Now that we have this trimmed to only the content that we need, we're going to export a copy of this. You're going to use this and post it to prove that you did in fact count out of order. So we'll also show how to do an export. So we're going to go to File and Export multi-track mix down, and entire session. And here you want to make sure that this is being saved into an appropriate folder. Make sure it's being saved in the mp3 format. Make sure that the sample is the same as what we picked um, at the beginning when we set up the document. 
and then say OK. There are times when exporting audio can take a while, but these clips are so short that it shouldn't take very long. Next, we're going to be able to add a, a music bed and trip, put the numbers into order. So we're going to do that using the razor tool. And although I could do it in this view, it's helpful to be able to zoom in on your timeline. So note that you can do that down here using these zoom tools. And that there's also keyboard shortcuts. If you ho hover over either one, you can zoom out using the keyboard shortcut, or you can zoom in. And note that you can also navigate over here um, to adjust each of your tracks to make them bigger or smaller. And you can also uh, navigate throughout your list of tracks as well. In this tutorial, we're not going to use that many tracks, but you may want to do that for future projects. This is the scrubber. This is what allows us to listen through different parts of our audio. And we're going to use that to help guide the razor tool. So we're going to use the razor tool to clip in between each of the numbers here that were recorded. And when I clip them, they're still going to play exactly the same way for now, but I can now independently move those sections of audio instead of moving it all as one piece. Although you should listen through to make sure you're making cuts in the right spot, you can also use the visual cues with the waveform um, to know that each one of these really represents when I say a number. We're going to go back to the move tool and construct these numbers in order on the second track. So let's see, we'll start just moving them roughly in order based on what they are. Two, six, ten. So two is going to go about here. Six will go farther down. 10 will go at the end. Depending on how many numbers or what order you had your numbers in, um, you can move them to those positions. Five, three, eight. Five is going to go right before six. Three goes after two. And note that at this point, I'm starting to hear both tracks playing because that's how the multi track system works. You can hear them both. Six. That's confusing and not what we want to hear right now. It's really handy to be able to mute a track. So I'm going to click on this little M for track two. We're going to mute that for now. We can still drag content into it, but we won't hear it playing, um, so it's not distracting. Eight, one, seven. Here's eight, one, seven. We'll go right before eight. You'll notice that if I drag the clips on top of each other, you see those yellow X's. Um, that is a crossfade. It means that the content would sort of fade into each other because we're stacking it on top of this cl the clips on top of each other. Um, in general, you want to avoid that unless that's the specific effect you're going for, and it's not the effect we're going for here. Four, nine. Do I have room for four? Not quite. I'll move those over. If I need to move things over, I can highlight them both at the same time by dragging around them with the move tool. And put things back in place. The last one here is 9. I'm going to get that in place. And 10. Now we'll listen through and make sure that that's actually in order. Oops, we need to turn off mute. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now that we know it's all in order, we have our pieces here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit for this next part. Um, but we now have all our counting in order, and that portion of things is relatively complete. You can also navigate your timeline using this top bar as well, um, especially to show where you are in your entire track. In the next part, we're going to be adding some music. This is music you can download from the course website if you haven't done it already. I've already added it to my tutorial folder, so I'm going to find that now. If this step doesn't work for you, this is called Ascona MP3. It comes in a zip folder and you need to unzip it, so make sure that it has been fully unzipped if you're not allowed to add it to the program. Here it is, we get to see the full waveform. I'm going to go back to our tutorial session and I'm going to drag that music file right into track number three below our numbers. 
And right away, you'll be able to tell that we can hear both the numbers and the music. But if we zoom out, we can also see that there's way more music than counting, and we don't need all of that. So we can either drag it in on the edges to trim up that music. We could also use the razor tool to clip it. But at this point, you only want, you want to leave about twice as much music as your counting takes up. You're going to want to be able to have about five seconds of music on either side of your counting. Once you have some music in place and it's lined up against the beginning of your track, go ahead and move all your counting numbers so that they're sort of centered in the middle so that we now have some music coming first, then all our counting, and then some music at the end. In the last step, we're going to adjust the audio volume of our music so that it fades in and fades out and also gets quieter during the part of the counting. So first we're going to click on that track, and when you do that you see these little squares appear in the corners for fading in and fading out. If you click and drag, it does that little uh, yellow arc that allows you to fade in. And notice that you can actually adjust sort of how it comes, but the natural way of just sort of a little bit of a curve is great. And now we can actually play this through and listen to how that goes. We can tell it's fading in a little bit, but the music is also just kind of quiet, especially at the beginning. So to boost the volume of this music, I'm still on the Move tool. I'm going to hover over this yellow line and then drag it up. That's changing the, vol the decibels, so that's changing the volume, essentially. And that will change the volume of the clip as a whole, but it will still include the fade in and out. And we can tell down here or in here that the levels are going up, and so that is a representation of the actual volume. You also want to be listening to it on your computer, but it's useful to look at the visual cues just in case um, your speakers or headphones don't match what other people might hear. Next, we're going to click on this yellow line about one second before the counting begins. And that will make this little blue dot. That allows us to manipulate this line instead of moving the whole line at once to be able to move part of it. Now about one second after we start counting, so just a little bit in, we're going to create another blue dot. Now we're going to drag the second one down to make the volume quite a bit quieter. This is where you'll have to listen through it and sort of see what's appropriate, um, but you can sort of guess for now. Then we're going to repeat that process again at the end. We're going to make two dots sort of on either side of the beginning and end of the counting. And then we're going to drag the one at the end back up so that the volume would increase before then fading out. Make sure you listen through so that you can tell that the music is noticeably fading in, dropping, when we start having the counting. Make sure that you can hear the counting properly and then that the music fades back up before fading out at the end. Let's see if this works. sounds pretty good. I thought the music was still a little bit distracting during the counting part, so I'm going to, whoops, I don't need a point there. If you don't want a point that you have accidentally created, you can just hit delete or backspace and it will disappear. So let's drag that point down a little bit to make that a little quieter. Now let's try that out one more time. That's much better. So now we just complete the process by going to File, Export, Multitrack Mixdown, and Entire Session.